Today, I'd like to tell you about Roots of Unity. This is one of my favorite topics to share with people, and I was really excited when I saw that it came up in, in our book and that, the, and that the author gave so much time and attention to it. Even so, I think it's still one of the things that maybe uh, a personal connection might bring a, a truer hue to. Unity already sounds cool. Now, in this case, it's a little bit misleading because they're just talking about one. And the reason why the word unity comes up is a little bit of a vestigial structure, you know, so and an, and an anachronism that's left from a long time ago, like ye old barber shop, and shop is spelled with two P's and an E or something like that. And the reason why is that for most of the history of Western tradition, mathematics, one hasn't always really been a number. It's only recently that we lump it in with everything else. And if you go back to uh, as far back as Euclid, you see some real equivocation that sometimes sort of treating it like a number when you need to do some arithmetic. And then at other times, when you want to talk about what numbers are and what they do, one doesn't count. So you get this other word for it, unity. Um, and numbers really only mean whole numbers, and they also only start once you have more than one of them. Things are already a little bit strange in this world, and so what I would like to do is to take you a little bit further in. This question of the roots of unity is something that we can handle today, and we can dig into it a fair bit, and you'll know more about this than probably anyone you'll run into on the street, but at the same time, we got to be a little bit careful not to go in too deep because this thing does sit at the root of a whole lot of other things. What I would like to do is to learn a small amount about this question. In the next hour, in the name of searching for the roots of unity, I wanna show you a little bit more about complex numbers and give you a chance to become more comfortable than you usually get to be with them. Maybe even in a pinch, you'll pull out the complex numbers someday. Now that you know the secret behind the name unity, that we're just talking about one, we can get down to business. So the other word here is roots. And so what that means is just like if someone asks you for the square root of four, someone asks you for the square root of two, we're gonna find the numbers whose powers are one. So let's take a look at that very simply real quick. Okay, now the board's nice and clean, we can get down to business. Roots of unity. We want to find numbers z whose nth power gives us 1. That's simple enough, right? Let's do some easy cases. For n equals 1, that's about the simplest equation I can imagine writing down. z equals 1. For n equals 2, I bet you also know what's going on. If I say that z squared is equal to 1, what are our possible answers? Well, there's 1, because 1 times 1 is 1, but then we also get minus 1. Plus or minus 1. Easy enough. And for most people, in most contexts, I think they would stop there. They would say, that's good enough. Those are all the roots of unity we need. But I know more roots of unity, and I'm, I'm willing to bet that you might know a number that's a root of unity too. And that's because somewhere in your travels, this number i came up. And what is i? Well, we call it imaginary, and that doesn't help because it actually is far from imaginary. And then also the real numbers, they're not really real at all. And we'll get into that, but that's, that's a story for another day. i is the number that when we square it, we get minus 1. And the reason that seems impossible at first is because, well, when you multiply a number by itself, it's always positive. Um, so i is, is already a different kind of number than the ones we're used to. If you're willing to pretend for a little while, the cool thing about algebra is that you can use i without even ever really believing in it or, or knowing about it. So if i squared is equal to minus 1, then i to the fourth is going to be minus 1 squared, which, as we already found out, is 1. So i is a fourth root of unity. More than that, minus i. 
raise that to the fourth power. How do you want to do this? We could separate it out. Minus 1 to the fourth times i to the fourth. And so minus 1 to the fourth is 1 times 1. Sure enough, that's 1, 2. For n equals 4, for the fourth roots of unity, we have i minus i minus 1 and 1. There are four fourth roots of unity. And 1 is always a root of unity, no matter what n is. And that's going to end up being, I don't know, not important, but like obvious, and we don't want to forget about it. So next, we're going to go even farther. Because for other n, there are other roots of unity. And we'll need the complex numbers. The complex numbers will show us what's going on. But so that maybe you begin to believe in the complex numbers, and also because it just works out really nicely here, what we're going to do is we're going to draw some pictures. Because the really neat thing about complex numbers is that the algebra and the geometry end up going together perfectly, like peanut butter and chocolate.